Lucy sits. Jerry, no! Jerry! Jerry, no! Uh, unfortunately, sorry to disappoint you, but my dogs aren't here. I am, however, in the south of France, in a place called Easy, just outside of Monaco. And I know it's been a while since I've done one of these walk and talks, but, well, I've been busy <laughs> and uh, haven't felt like doing them, so I'm not going to do them if I don't feel like it. But I feel like it today. It's a good day to go for a walk here in beautiful south of France. I'm actually in a place, well, I'll tell you about this place in a little bit. Let's start walking. So, I'm actually here with uh, Joby Weeks of Big Club. Um, Vit Jedlika, the president of Lieberland, uh, one of the top Bitcoin, uh, I don't know what you even call them, traders. Uh, he can facilitate $10 million Bitcoin trades from Hong Kong. Uh, numerous other people. The Trillionaire is here. I, uh, I'll put some information about him if I remember later, or I might see him on our walk down here. So let's just start walking. I'll get into what I want to talk about today. Beautiful, amazing place. Uh, it's a friend of Joby's who allowed us to stay here this week. I'm just coming back from, uh, I was in, well, I was in Colorado for the Nexus Conference, then London for the Dash Conference, then the World Blockchain Forum. Now I'm here for a few days. I'll show you this house. This house is sick. This is going to be like Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous sort of a thing for a moment. Or one of those shows where they show you beautiful houses. What's that, the rappers on MTV or something? So that's the bottom end of the pool. I will go through here. Beautiful kitchen. There's some other people talking some deals here. You can make it happen. That's the big thing. It's Joby Weeks. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Vic Joby Talking some deals. He's always doing deals. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I showed him, yeah. Swimming pool's amazing. Come to Monaco. Come to Monaco. Yeah, it's nice, but they don't have poker. I gotta tell everyone. That is so wild. I can't believe they don't have poker. That's freaking crazy. I know. It's, don't believe what you see on TV. I should know. If anyone should know that. I know. That's what I thought. I was going to wear my tuxedo and everything. So, going down the stairs, there's an elevator here. Numerous bedrooms. I don't know if Stephanie's in here. Joby's wife. But, oh, she is. So I won't go in here. But, uh, beautiful. Take the elevator down from the next floor. Take a video through the stairs and through all the glass. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention the Hello. glass. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty trippy. Some more bedrooms here, so we'll take the elevator down. And we'll go for a little walk. So, uh, I'll wait till we get outside before I start talking about what I want to talk about today. Hope everyone's doing well. And the, they got the, the, the maid, who's a man here. Um, not that it should be a woman, but cleaning the rooms already. So nice. Oh, I missed the elevator. Come on. There we go. All right, so we'll go down. So, yeah, beautiful place. Um, and so nice for me because being in London, same as New York, uh, I just can't take it for more than a couple of days. It's just the energy, the it's too many people, it's not enough palm trees. So I'm feeling great. That's going to be part of the uh, part of what I want to talk about on this. So we're heading out to the garage here. It's the garage, and we'll head outside. Now this is very steep hill, so I don't know how far I'll be able to walk without being too out of breath. Yeah, so we're outside here now. I saw someone walking their dog earlier. It made me a little bit sad, but I'm all right. Can't be with my dogs all the time. All right, so we're walking. So yeah, it's been a while since I did these uh, walk and talks. And uh, if you remember, month or two ago, 
I was saying how I was going to get to the point where I could go on these trips and stick to my routine. And uh, I tried one or two trips and they were semi-successful, but in the end I couldn't. So I returned home to get grounded again. And uh, if you remember, I said I knew I was gonna get to a point where I could go on trips and totally stick to, I don't, I don't like the word routine, but stick to the things that really I need to do to be in a good state of mind. Here's a view here. And, uh, well, the point of this video is that you can do whatever you wanna do because I did it, I finally did it. So I've been on this trip. I have had, I've been actually going out to, you know, at these conferences, cocktail parties and stuff. Have a couple drinks, like one or two. I think the most I had one night was four or five, which that was just one night. And I actually kind of regretted that a little bit because it was a little too much, but uh, I didn't beat myself up over it. And even last night, last night was the most, uh, Interesting for me personally because Joby had a bunch of people over. There was a, quite a party going on in the house. I hung out for a little bit and then I just went to my room and did some reading, did some writing. Um, just totally not what I would have done in the old days. Feeling great this morning, feeling amazing. I almost feel as good as if I was at home. Um, so I've done it. So this is kind of the point that I really wanted to get across on this video is Anything you really want to do, you can do. I think this is sort of driven out of us or beaten out of us uh, through the whole what society does. And so it's on purpose, a lot of this stuff. But I think the system, the society, the, the culture, the cult, the people who are more or less trying to control the world, really want people not to realize. I better remember how to get back here because there's a bunch of winding streets here. Let's try going. Let's start going this way. Try going up. So, yeah, they, they don't want people to realize their power. And so a lot of people, and I was a little bit one of them, but not as much as most people, some people, you can tell, they have no belief in their own ability, in their own power. They seem to think life is always hurting them or against them or they're not in control of it. That's not my experience. And this is proof. So you've watched me on these walk and talks, talking about this, I wanted to get to this stage. You've seen me go through some failures. You've seen me not beat myself up over it, which I've, that was one lesson I had to learn, is beating yourself up over not being able to achieve exactly what you wanted uh, has no value. And it's, it's antithetical to what you're trying to do anyway. Look at the positives. And there were positives on my past trips, but at the end of the day, I just, I couldn't fully do it. But I didn't let that uh, get me down. And so now I've been gone from home for, I don't know, it's gotta be about 10 days now. I feel great. I just finished my, I woke up this morning, uh, took all my her herbs, not herbs, herbs, people keep telling me. Man, I hope I don't forget how to get back. I'm not gonna go too far because I don't wanna get lost. <laughs> this would be a whole other video, me trying to find the house. Uh, did my coffee enema. I gotta tell ya, those coffee enemas, you gotta do them. There was a guy at the house and he told me, he said, you know, they mentioned enemas three times in the Bible. And again, like, I'm not sure about the Bible. I think there's a lot of misinformation in there on purpose and I don't know who wrote it or why but that is interesting though right and if you look at a lot of cultures that is sort of in the cultures of a lot of things and the uh, to me the, the animas do two things 
One is you clean out your system, which, uh, you know, the, your intestines and all of that, that's where things go into your bloodstream, right? So if you have some toxins, and everyone does, and if you don't get those out, you're just constantly kind of uh, poisoning yourself throughout the day. So if you can get that all cleaned out, that's good. But I don't think that's the most important part of the enema. Uh, I hear, again, I'm no expert, that the, man, these hills, I'm gonna be out of breath here pretty soon. Try going up. Wonder how high we can go. But I think the, uh, the most important part possibly is, I hear that essentially what you're doing is you're cleaning your blood. So you do the coffee enema, a lot of it goes into your liver, I believe. Again, I could be totally wrong, correct me in the notes below. But uh, essentially it's like a, a blood cleaning every morning. And I don't know, but after I do it, I feel really good. Really clean, really refreshed. Excellent way to start your day. Uh, at this house, they have a gym. I'm gonna go hit that after. They also have a steam room and a sauna. And I've really gotten into the saunas. Uh, that's another thing too. Sweating out, again, toxins. And I know the word toxin gets thrown around a lot. A lot of people are like, oh, whatever. No, like, <laughs> you're just constantly, uh, you know, getting things into your body, even from the air. And I have to say, I've seen tons of chemtrails here, or at least the trails. I'm not 100% positive on the chemtrails, but I do have to say, so you can see them right here. You can see one, hopefully. Actually, two. And in the morning, it's like really blue. And after you get about 30 of those lines, they all kind of spread out and you get this kind of haze. So anyway, if that's true, Apparently that's aluminum and other kinds of stuff. And the reasons why they're doing it, if they're doing it, not 100% sure again. Oh, there's some little staircase here. It's kind of cool. Uh, part, some people say it's for global warming, but global warming is BS. Uh, I think it's possibly some sort of essentially genocide. Uh, this whole thing with all the bees disappearing, there's apparently a fair amount of evidence that this aluminum and the other stuff affects them. Uh, there's a little bee in my ear, as I said, that's interesting. And, um, so anyway, I don't know if that's true or not or whatever, but uh, if that's true, then, you know, you're breathing that in, uh, a lot of the food, a lot of the water, unless you're really, really super careful, has a lot of stuff you don't really want in it. That's interesting. Let's try going up here. Hope I don't get lost. So, uh, so yeah, the saunas. So I'm looking at building a place actually in Acapulco now. And that's all I put, I have like, Sort of like four things I want. Of course, my wife wants a giant closet. This is fairly normal for women, from what I can tell. I want my office to be awesome. I want the view and the studio to be awesome, just the exact way I want it, of course. But then I also want a steam room and a jacuzzi, or sorry, a steam room and a sauna, and a cool pool. Okay, we're reached the end of this path. Um, the hot and the cold thing is really good. Uh, I watched uh, Anthony Robbins, he's got a cold pool. Uh, it's just like this little hole in the ground with really cold water that he apparently did. I don't know if he still does. I think he might do cryotherapy stuff now, but anyway, I think that's really good in the morning. So this morning I actually had a really cold shower and you can get the really cold water here. It's not, in Acapulco you can't really get cold water unless you purposely freeze it. Uh, just because it's so warm. Here it's probably like 22 degrees today. In Acapulco it would be like 29 or 30 Celsius. So, uh, 
yeah, really into that stuff. And even on this trip, actually, I went in London to a place called Cryo 111, I believe it's called, and did the cryotherapy. They had this entire room that you go into for three minutes. It's about minus 80, I believe, which actually isn't that much colder than where I grew up, which is interesting because, you know, in some ways, maybe it's okay to live in cold places for that reason because, you know, you can get that. Because uh, what it does, the cold kind of like shocks your system. Apparently just that three minutes in the cryotherapy thing, which wasn't that uh, difficult, by the way, if anyone, just give it a shot. It, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't like super painful or anything. It was just, it was pretty cold. That was about it. You definitely were like feeling like, okay, three minutes is enough, but it wasn't like uh, torture or anything like that. And uh, so yeah, apparently after three minutes you can, your, your body burns about 800 calories after that, which is quite a bit of calories, especially if you're doing what I'm doing now, which is the intermittent fasting. That's another thing I've totally stuck to on this trip. In fact, in London, one of the only things I kind of really liked was that there's these stores called Preta Manger. I don't know how you say it in French. I totally forgot all my French. Although I'm getting it back almost by the hour here as I hear it, because I used to, I was forced to learn it in the indoctrination camps in Canada. And, um, So there's a Preta Manger uh, restaurant and they have all these great uh, organic juices and uh, ginger shots, really enjoyed that. So I just have my juices every morning and I was last until four or five, six in the afternoon without eating, without any problems. Like it wasn't hard, just having those juices and doing those routines. No major walks, although I did go for walks in London, but not too much. It's just too many people, too much noise and all that kind of stuff. But. Uh, Yeah, so so anyway been uh, doing all that stuff feeling great uh, got a lot of good things accomplished on this trip met a lot of interesting people um, I now am feeling so good I finally I I couldn't write our newsletter for the dollar vigilante while I was in London it's just like, like your brain my brain everyone's different but I, I just get discombobulated in those cities like that but being here i could just totally breathe and all the ideas start coming and the feeling of uh being wanting to write that stuff just starts flowing so yeah the uh the you know the main point of this whole thing is uh, yet again, I, I had an intention. I worked hard on it. This is the thing, like a lot of people will say, you know, some people believe this and I totally believe it, but a lot of other people kind of believe it, but they might have it a bit wrong. You know, this law of attraction, I'm not sure exactly about the law of attraction and all that, but I, I'm pretty sure most of this stuff's real now because <laughs> I've done it so many times that if you really have an intention, you will achieve whatever you want. But, and here's the but, you have to work really hard at it. It's not easy. And you're going to have lots of ups and downs. You just got to stick it through it. Have faith. Faith in yourself. Faith in the universe. Faith in whatever. But have faith that you will achieve it. And I'm at the point now where I've done this so many times that it's just, I just know that's how things work now. And so any future sort of things that I want to try to achieve... I will pretty much approach it as though, as soon as I form that intention and I'm serious about it, that it's already done. <laughs> because in a, in a way, time doesn't really exist. Well, actually, time doesn't really exist. What time is it right now? It's always now. The past is whatever the past is, the future is whatever that is, but it's always now. So time doesn't really exist. It's some sort of a construct in this realm or this dimension that, uh, you know, I love that quote, we have time because otherwise everything would happen all at once. And that's true. <laughs> uh, it's the way it's designed, whatever this is, right? Now, what this is, that's, that's sort of where I left off the last time I was doing these walk and talks is I was going to get into my beliefs on what life is. 
And I don't know if I'll get fully into it on this. I, my main goal with this one was to try to inspire people to uh, make, to know that they can achieve whatever they want. Uh, and I've shown that again live on YouTube <laughs> or Facebook, wherever you're watching. Because uh, if you watched me a few months ago, it wasn't a sure thing I was going to achieve this. But I do remember saying that I knew I was going to achieve it. And that's just through experience. And you, you have to experience these things yourself. So if you're watching this and I sound totally crazy, that's because you haven't experienced enough of it yet to know it's true. And how could you possibly trust me? You don't even know I'm if I'm even real, right? If you never met me, I'm just somebody on a screen. So why would you, you know, how could you possibly just believe everything I have to say right now? The thing about life is you have to experience it. And that's what life's for that I can get into in further episodes about what life is, is to experience. Um, okay, I'm already forgetting where I came from. I hope I don't get lost. I guess it's okay if I get lost. Just be a longer walk, that's all. Hmm, maybe down here. So, yeah, I'm totally already lost. I have no sense of direction. Although I do recognize that house, so I'm heading in the right direction, I think. Although, no, they all have the same roof. <laughs> hmm. Did I walk by here? I think I must have came this way. Anyway. So, you know, for anyone out there who's not happy with certain things in their life, whatever it is, and you want to make that change, you can. Whether it's, you know, it's something basic like your, your weight, let's say you're overweight. That's, that's a really easy one, in my opinion. Um, or for me, uh, it was drinking less. And, you know, I, I didn't drink for a long while at all, and I was great. And, uh, you know, I've been having some drinks on this trip. And what I've found is even a couple of drinks really gives me no real benefit, but it's just like this habit. <laughs> and it's sort of, you know, it is hard, hard to get rid of these habits. But, uh, no, so if you want to lose some weight or whatever, like, that's pretty easy, in my opinion. Um, you just have to focus on it and do the right things. So I, you know, for example, if you do want to lose weight, just do some intermittent fasting. Do a juice fast. Uh, I did one recently, just uh, before my trip, actually, yeah. That's a really good idea, in my opinion. Uh, before the trip, I did a five-day juice fast. I just, uh, I think I only drank... Oh, organic uh, fresh grape juice red grape juice and uh, a little bit of lime juice with a bit maple syrup but mostly just the grape juice so I was already and that resets your whole system and it's not that hard so again if you're watching this and it's like oh it's so hard it's not you, but you just have to do it once you do it you realize it's mostly all fears that are in your head um, and that's really what you have to kind of get a hold of is all the the fears in your head all the that bad information all the programming in your head I don't recognize this <laughs> oh man I have no sense of direction I, I think like I have no spatial awareness either <laughs> I don't think I was meant to be on this dimension for some reason and this is just like all like so like whoa and I just I can get lost just like this in five minutes and I pretty much am anyway I have I have Google Maps <laughs> if worst case scenario I'll turn off the video and check Google Maps anyway how did I get lost so fast but yeah point of this video I don't want to make this too long is uh yeah you can do whatever you want and so yet again i've managed to achieve a goal it took uh, this goal from the time that i made this goal i think it was about what three months ago that i was saying i i, I really want to get to the point where i can go on these trips and and still be in a good space you know not uh not drink too much not get depressed that's another thing. I'm, I'm like not depressed hardly at all. Uh, just a little bit when I think about my dogs 
just my kids, my, my wife, my that sort of thing. But I, I just pretty quickly put it out of my head because I can't change that right now. Uh, they're okay. I talk to them every day. And uh, I get photos of the dogs. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I just have to just not think about it too much. And, and soon enough, man, I think I'm totally lost. I, unless this is could be here. If this was Facebook Live, I could ask people if you recognize <laughs> where I walked by. But I'm doing this. I'm just recording this. Could be up here. Yeah, actually, I think we're all right. I think we're on the right track. Um, yeah, so I, uh, you know, from the start of when I really tried to start making changes, it was about two years ago. So, you know, or at least a year ago, a year and a half ago, maybe that I just went, okay, got to fix this. I'm not in a good place and I want to get in a better place. Um, so if you've been watching or following me for like a year and a half, uh, you know all the things I've been going through, all the things I've been trying. Um, I guess another sort of a, oh, right. I haven't talked about this. The last sort of thing that really changed my life, I was in Serbia. I think I met, no, I did mention this. I mentioned, yeah. So that was my last uh, walk and talk when I mentioned that I didn't have gratitude. And once I did, and once I realized that was something I, I obviously should have, but for whatever reason, it didn't fully connect. I just didn't, I was so sort of in that depression state of mind and I was still living for the material stuff and trying to find that next thing that's going to make me happy. That, uh, And of course, I've learned since then that nothing outside of me is going to make me happy. I have to go inside and connect with whatever you want to call it, God, the universe. There obviously is something. It could even just be us, and this is a whole thing that I'm still trying to figure out, and I don't think we'll ever figure it out. I don't think I'll ever figure it out. I don't think we're supposed to figure it out. I might be totally lost. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, that'll be for another video. I'm still working on my theories. And no matter what I come up with, I, I think I'll be wrong. <laughs> but I think it's a decent theory and it's a decent way of looking at what life might actually be. But the one thing I do, I think really know now is that you have total control of your experience. So if you're not happy for whatever reason, you wanna change something. That's pretty French lady. Um, you can totally change it. So that's the point of this video. And I'm going to get on Google Maps pretty soon because I don't recognize where I am. Ah, I'll just keep talking because I'm kind of enjoying this. Haven't done this in a while. Yeah, we, and you know, all the experiences, like I was thinking about this this morning, like I, I, when I woke up this morning, I was like, man, I wish I knew this stuff 20 years ago. But you know what? If I knew this stuff 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I think I had to go through this experience uh, for whatever reason. That looks kind of like the house. I don't know. <laughs> I'll go on Google Maps soon. But I think I had to go through all this. You know, if you look at my personal life, it's kind of interesting. Because I had, you know, it's one thing I can definitely say is having success too early in life could be really bad. And that's what I had. At like 27, I was a multi-millionaire. Uh, and I didn't have all my stuff sorted out. So because of that, I, uh, I totally got on, you know, I lost a lot of stuff and I don't think this is where I'm supposed to go. Anyway, I'll just keep walking.
<laughs> but yeah, so I had to go through that. I had to go and try to live the life that I thought was what I wanted to find out that's not what I wanted. And that took a long time. And then through it all, uh, and through my experiences, I realized a lot of stuff like how the government, the central banks, really s just uh, screw everything up, which led me to doing what I'm doing today with the intention and goal of getting rid of all governments and central banks from this earth. And I think we're getting there. This is the interesting thing. And maybe this is why I'm kind of like in a pretty good mood. As we speak in the house, they're talking about Liberland, a totally free country, uh, and how well that's going. I might be interviewing Vit uh, later on that. Uh, when I was at Nexus, Roger Veer announced he's buying an island, starting up his own anarcho-capitalist utopia. So that's two countries. Uh, they're all talking, of, obviously, about just using cryptocurrencies, probably as the, that'll be the main currency in the place, although it won't be forced on anyone, obviously, but everyone who'll be moving there will be into that kind of stuff. We have the cryptocurrencies, which are really continuing to uh, cause major problems for the central banks and the banks. The banks don't even know what to do at this point. So we're, you know, that was also one of my intentions, right? I'm not saying it was just me that caused this, or maybe, you know, you create your own reality. And that was one of my intentions and we're getting there. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So just watching this all happen and seeing this all happening, that's just another sort of a, you can do anything. So I think I'm gonna have to turn off my phone and check Google Maps because I think I am pretty lost now. But yeah, it's kind of, I can't finish this with the dogs. So I guess I'll just finish it with, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Oh, sure. <laughs> this is. Uh... I I don't know. I don't live here. <laughs> I have Google Maps. Don't you have Google Maps? I have Google Maps. No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. Third on. Oh, two cute blonde girls. I shouldn't have just got in the car with them. Anyway, yeah, so anyway, life can actually... That's basically my life now. Not just that, but... Pretty much all kinds of great things gravitating now. I think that's another thing, too. I'll finish it off with this. Is when you get your energy in the right place, everything just comes. And everything just so easy and it flows. And uh, if you don't get your energy in that right place, then everything just is crappy. And bad things happen all the time. So find your, find your zone. If you're not in that zone, life will tell you just by how things go for you. And then just work, meditate, you know, work on yourself and find ways to change that. Um, and you can change that. That's the whole point of this video. So hopefully uh, this inspires some people to do whatever you feel you really want to do because you can. Until next time, from somewhere, maybe back in Acapulco. Peace, love, anarchy. So we're having a party later tonight, if you want to go. When? At our house tonight. What? Tonight party, our house. If you want to go. Here, I'll get out here. One second, <laughs> One second, I'm stuck. My... Uh, here, no? Maybe you... Um, For 10 minutes, yeah, it's possible.
Oh, uh, no, just in our house tonight. Party if you want to go. Music. <laughs> if you want. It's, uh, what are you doing tonight? No, I don't know. You're welcome to come if you want. As? Ways. It's, um, I guess the video isn't over. Uh, <laughs> some nice Russian girls coming to our house tonight for a party. So, like I said, just go with the flow. Everything just comes to you just sort of naturally if you're in the right place. Uh, and just go with whatever's happening too. That's another sort of a thing. You know, I think everyone sort of, everything happens for a reason. So they were lost, I was lost. That's life, you just let it happen. So I'll leave it at that. I gotta go uh, do some work and get ready for the party.